time. Good morning. We'll be Good morning. Uh, I'm Rick Bonfim, and I'm in uh, Athens, Georgia, and uh, we're dealing with uh, Leviticus. And a discriminating eye said to me this week, why in the world do we have to deal with Leviticus? What is there in Leviticus that I should spend my time on, on, on Monday morning at 9 o'clock? Well, it's very simple. I'll, I'll explain to you. There's not a, been a time in the history of America, Christianity, in which the cross of Calvary, the cross of Jesus Christ, is being diminished, rejected, misunderstood, criticized, and put down. In other words, sin is not sin anymore. Now I tell you, well, I'm, a, I'm a sinner. And I need to know what sin is. And I want to make sure that my soul considers what I've done wrong and corrected. And so, the pulpit today is being turned into a place to where uh, a homosexual uh, is able to, to take the pulpit of uh, a church and and say that it's okay to have that type of uh, uh, sexual activity in the pulpit. It's not sin. So just for that, read the book of Leviticus, because the book of Leviticus deals with how God prepared His people, Israel. They were about a, 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 under the shadow of Mount Sinai. They were in the Median Desert, looking far to Mount Sinai in Egypt. And they were... Uh, Learning what God thought how to deal with sin. And when you go to, to Leviticus chapter 1, you deal with a burnt offering, something that burns in the brazen altar. And then you deal with a meat offering, which is really uh, actually flour, fine flour, and, and uh, frankincense and oil mixed together and put on the fire at a certain level uh, to <laughs> offer it to the Lord. And of course, the, the, the peace offerings over here, which really had to do with the, the, the offering of the kidneys and the liver and the membrane, the cow, which symbolized the, the part of the blood, part of the body of an animal that filters blood. And of course, the sin offering, in which 80% of the animal, 99% of the animal had, be, had to be thrown outside of the camp. Because once a year, atonement took place in Israel. So we are dealing with this primarily because to understand the concept of what God is trying to say to us and what He said to Moses, and Moses passed unto Aaron, Aaron passed unto his sons, in order that the people of Israel would understand what God thinks about sin. Now there's some things that, uh, that I want to share with you. While sin offering, which is the last of the five, atones for sin. It atones for the nature of sin. Not for the sin itself, the nature. The sin nature. It's much deeper. That is why, that is why the flay of the meat had to be to the bone, cutting down to the bone, in order to say that the nature of sin, because we, we are fallen people. Uh, uh, and and, and we, we, we're born in sin, and God has to deal with who we are in our sin. And so the sin nature. Well, here's a, a, an understanding. Someone said to me this week, if you have a babysitter that abuses uh, uh, the baby, per se, or abuses the child, uh, and, and suddenly that person is totally converted, healed, delivered, and set free, would you trust that person to take care of your baby? And of course the answer is, if God didn't do the nature, the total concept here, I'm not talking about the security of the child. By the way, you should never use that subject to deal with a human being if he is not a predator, a sexual predator. And of course, when you deal with a sexual predator that has repeated sins in that area, I agree. But, but 
if you're not a sex predator and you've been involved in that type of thing, you should allow the person to be clean. The point is this. The sin offering is deals with the nature of the sin. Now, the guilty offering, which is the trespass offering that we've been dealing with this week, deal with specific acts of sin. Totally different. When you go to 514, Leviticus 514, that's something that uh, the Lord says to uh, uh, says to uh, to Moses. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin that he has sinned in one of these. And it shall be given forgiven him. And the remnant shall be the priest's as a meat offering. So a handful of flour was given to the priest with him using it as a meal offering. The meat offering was not an offering for sin. It was a thanksgiving offering. And by the way, uh, these two offerings are distinct and different. And uh, we'll talk about today a little bit. So the animal for, for this uh, priestly sin was a ram. The same four principles for the sin offering apply to the guilty offering. The ram served as a substitute. The offerer had to identify the, with him, confessing his sin and transferring the sin from himself unto the animal. It's the concept of substitution. The cross, Jesus is our substitute. The offerer then killed the animal while the priest took its blood and apply it to the proper place. And finally, the exchange of life. The life of the animal for my life. I'm forgiven. Now, who said, who said you're forgiven? God did. God said, if you do this, in this sacrifice, I forgive you. So what is God trying to do in Leviticus that has uh, anything to do with us today? Is that he's teaching the concept of the cross. The cross is the element here. The cross is the focal point here. The cross is the major thing you've got to pay attention. And some of us Christians have gone to sleep on the cross. And we have no understanding what the cross means. And so I'm trying to tell you that every day you wake up, you look at the cross and say, God, thank you for being my substitute. I praise you to remove my sin today in my body, my, my body in the name of Jesus. You see, we don't do that. Honestly, we take communion once a Sunday and, 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 take a, and take a nice nap during it. And what I'm saying to you is that in order to understand the book of Leviticus, you're going to have to understand the cross. The ram will serve the substitute. Jesus is the substitute. The transferring of the sin to the sinner, to the animal, is done. Confessing his sins before God and the animal has the sin. The blood is sprinkled. Now, during the atonement, the priest would take some of the blood on his hands. The veil is opened by hooks, large hooks. Five priests on each side pulling that curtain down. And the priest would walk into the Holy of Holies in the presence of God. If something was wrong or he wasn't supposed to be there, he had a rope attached to his foot. You would drop dead before God. You could not lie. You could not play a game. God is holy. And then when you sprinkle the blood upon the, upon the Ark of the Covenant, upon the cover of the Ark of the Covenant, the mercy seat is the cover in the Ark of the Covenant. And by the way, kind of interesting, there are two angels on the Ark of the Covenant, one on each side, made out of pure gold. When Jesus was resurrected from the dead, Mary Madeline looked, and there were two angels, two men inside, meaning that, that always two animals, two, two, two angels are present with God in the Ark of the Covenant, symbolizing the Ark of the Covenant, in, in the day of His resurrection. The difference is that one is of gold, and, one, and the other one was angels of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. And I like that, that idea. It makes me, uh, makes me believe in the resurrection. And, uh, but why am I de dealing with the book of Leviticus? I'm dealing with the book of Leviticus so you understand the cross. You grow in it. 
Jesus is a substitute. Say that. So when you take communion next time, say, Father, I thank you that my sons have my sins have been transferred. And I, I offer you my guilty offering, my trespass offering, my sin offering, God. I, I, I submit to you and I ask you to forgive my sins. Second, Lord, I ask you that uh, my sins be transferred, God, to Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary today. So, and that his precious blood atoned for me. So, here we are then. Now, unlike the sin offering, there's something about the, the trespass offering, the guilty offering, that is very important. When a tithe, for instance, to God was withheld, it eventually had to be paid plus one-fifth more as a fine. So I don't know if it's one-fifth of a hundred dollars. Twenty dollars. So you have to pay... Uh, the tide, one hundred dollars, and then a hundred and twenty more. So you, 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 out of a hundred dollars, you pay a hundred and twenty. And so, the Israelites had to learn that it was better to pay the Lord than not to pay because the fine was severe. So God is instituting the tide. Notice that I'm talking about the book of Leviticus, and if you look at the book of Leviticus, it was written. 1490 years before Christ and God is already talking about the fifth what is the fifth the part that hurts it is it is twenty dollars out of a hundred imagine if you're if you made fifty thousand dollars today a year gross ten percent to be five thousand you don't pay you have to pay a fifth of it which is really, really a lot of money. And so, what I'm saying to you is that the tide has been established by the Lord just after Mount Sinai. And he speaks about the way God deals with our sins. And, and by the way, you're under grace today. He's not going to, if I don't give the tide, he's not going to uh, hurt me. But I'll be hurting myself. I'm so... I'm so committed to tithing that I decided to give everything to the Lord. I don't have a salary. I have my expenses paid by the ministry, but I don't have a salary. We tried to buy a condo, and I couldn't borrow the money because I don't have any credit. So what I'm saying to you is this. If I live uh, by faith, it's much better than to live uh, by payment. And uh, I thank God for that, that you have tied into this church, this ministry, for 30 to 40 to 50 years. You have tied, you have blessed me, you have watched over us, you, you have your credit card every month, you give for faith in Raleigh. And I've been fighting with those of you who do not tithe. I have to call you to ask you for an offering. And I hope you'll be convicted. Some of you are way down there on a big vacation spending five, six, eight thousand dollars on you and, y and your wife, but you haven't given a tithe unto the Lord. And so I charge you with that. God's going to ask you the fifth. He's going to come after you and pull your leg and say, pay the fifth. Amen. I'm just joking. Just, just relax now. <laughs> okay. Now, and so on the other hand, when no specific sin was mentioned, or even known, the person that is offering then would offer only the ram because they had paid the tithe with no restitution included. Restitution simply means one-fifth and pay the tithe you have unto the Lord. If you did not pay your tithe, then you need to pay 100% plus one-fifth, and $100 is $20. Now that's what the Lord instituted there. So uh, are you a fifth? Can I call you a fifth? Can I refer to you as Mr. Fifth? You don't pay nothing. You don't give nothing. And you're trying to tell me what to do. I'm the preacher. I'm the priest. And I'm saying to you, you don't give anything to us. Now, if anyone stole, cheated, exhorted, look at uh, Leviticus 6. And this, this is interesting because there's, there's a lot of cheating uh, for the people of God. People of God can cheat like 
Terrible. Look at this. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, If a soul sins and commits a trespass against the Lord, most sins is against God. Okay? That sins against others, but against God. And lie unto his neighbor that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in the thing taken away by violence, or deceited. You can take this lamb. It is a good lamb. It's clean and pure, and, uh, and it's, it's perfect. And after the priests look at it, and they begin to prepare for, uh, for sacrifice, they find out that it has one, one liver only. And you lied. You're going to have to pay. Or well, have found that which was lost in lies concerning it, and swears falsely. Or any of the things that man does, then it shall be that because he has sinned and is guilty, he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which was deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, and, or lost the thing which he found. So, let me read uh, what, uh, what my commentary says, because it's very rich. I, I want you to hear this. There's a fine principle involved in expression in verse 2. Against the Lord. Although the matter in question was wrong done to one's neighbor or to a friend, a relative, a family member. Yet the Lord looked upon it as a trespass against himself. See, when you lie to your neighbor and you take what's not yours, God takes it personally. You're doing it against me. How dare you go over there and sell a car for, for, for 1995 in perfect condition. As soon as the guy drives out of the parking lot, it falls apart right on the next gas station. You lied. You deceived that man. You took from him. You're going to have to deal with God. God's going to come and pull your leg in the middle of the night. Why? Because you lied against him. God says, when you, when you steal from my, from my children, you're stealing from me now. This is very interesting. Yet the Lord looked upon as a trespass against himself. Everything must be viewed in reference to the Lord. Everything must be viewed in, relation, in relationship with the Lord. Sin is something against God. It matters not who may be affected. Jehovah must get first place. So when David's conscience was pierced by the arrow of conviction, in reference to his treatment of Uriah, he explains this. This is, this is, this is David in 2 Samuel 12, 13. I have sinned against the Lord. As David begins to move in the ascent in the Mount of Olives, with his entourage, going to, going to the top of the mountain, going to Bethany, the king, the, King David. An older man stood on the right side and said, You king, you sin against God, king. You sin against God. You done terrible. You're not a good king. You don't deserve it. Uh, and one of the soldiers, one of the mighty soldiers of David said, Could I cut his neck right now? And David said, Don't stop him. He's telling the truth. That's the heart of a man who loves God. And so, uh, so if you stole, restitution consists of the value that was taken. Let's say you took $1,000 from somebody on a deal. In order to somehow do right restitution, you need to pay $1,000 back to the guy plus another $100 and, and one-fifth, the value plus one-fifth. Pay to the person who was wrong. Is that done in America? Not really. I'm talking about that uh, we steal, rob, kill, destroy. Do it in the name of Jesus. You're talking about uh, a corrupted. Now, how can you survive if you live in an environment like this? You do restitution. You ask forgiveness. You go to the altar. You take communion. You confess to the person you're taking from and giving the money back. I had a very old beat up car. It was got to be one of the most uh, uh, demonic cars I've ever had. 
it had it had problems with the wheels. It had problems with the lights. It had problems with a. It was a, a a blue whatever that was. I don't remember what it was, but it was a little station wagon blue. <coughs> and after I sold to this man for about five hundred dollars, he went into the gas station and called me. And the car was on fire. It was on fire. It was right here on uh, Barnett Shows Road. It was on fire. They had to call the big red fire truck and okay and and he came to me and said sir you did me wrong and i said i did your money's fresh on my pocket here's a 500 dollars. i tell you i really went home and mary lucy said i told you not to do it you're not supposed to buy that car you did something and she just messed me up and i was angry and bitter i don't know what happened but uh rick got a brand new hatchback i don't know which hatchback was if it was Ford, if it was Honda, but a hatchback. A beautiful hatchback, strong car. On Christmas 2000, whatever, uh, uh, one or, or, or 19, whatever the year was, during the passage of the year, when, you know, it's the, the ball comes out of there on a stick and hits the ground in New York. It was 12, 15 minutes past for 12, and, and we're at... Uh, 152 Spalding Court. They had no furniture those days. Everything is on the floor, including meals. We had nothing. <laughs> no, <laughs> And we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, and praying, and praying, and asking the Lord. I had a call from uh, Highway Patrol. I said, your son is in a deadly accident, sir. I don't know if he's alive or not, but you need to run here. So I run, drove all the way to a... To, uh, 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 the road up there north of here somewhere and uh and as soon as i got there i run straight into that ball of mash of metal i said son are you there son talk to me son he said dad i'm fine i'm fine i got one one little nick on my leg is hurting but i'm fine i feel my bones everything's okay and as they took the jaws of light to break that thing open sammy rick said dad god spare me I have no hurt except right here on my, my leg, a little, a little blood in there. But there was metal, as if someone put a hand and pushed the metal away. Well, I did restitution. And the Lord honored me by saving my, the life of my son. That's a true story. Now, next. The offer provided a trespass offering to the Lord. So here's a man that is guilty of some type of sin like uh, selling an old car, like I did. He brings an offering to the Lord. The guilty offering, trespass offering, uh, uh, like sin offering, atone for sin. The guilty offering, like sin offering, atone for sin. Because, because one is against God and the other one is against men but atones for sin meaning God forgives the sin that you did and one of the interesting things about this is prophet Isaiah he says 53 10 he says the Lord makes his life a guilty offering Isaiah 53 10 in other words he's referring to the sacrificial system and yet he's using the words the Lord makes his life a trespass offering for me. You see, at the cross, you never, never, never at the cross, when you take communion and you are recognizing the cross of Jesus Christ, you never, never, never pray that you ask Him to forgive for the sins of others. We take communion, thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. That's how we say. Why don't, you, why don't you say, God, forgive me for the trespass sins that I have against somebody else. God, forgive me for, for sinning against you today. God, forgive me for taking something that I suppose this and that and that and that and that and that that I did. You see, that becomes more personal. Why do I am studying the book of Leviticus? So you become personal. Give me a break. You make me yell and, and, <laughs> and sweat here. <laughs> Why don't you do it? Stop bothering me. Do it. Go to the altar and say, God, now what's going to happen? I don't know. My, son was, my, life, my son's life was spared. It might be that you get a new job. It might be that he bless you with a smile when you have no teeth. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. People ask me, oh, Mr. Bonfim, you don't look 78 years old. I don't look 78. I look happy. I look joyful. I look like I got a future. All I need is a wife. Oop. Just as the ram had to be perfect, so Jesus is without defect. 1 Peter 1.19. I want to read that. 1 Peter 1.19. I don't know where 1 Peter is, but let's take a look. I found 2 Peter, so it's got to be next, right? 1 Peter 1.19. Let's take a look. Uh, it's got to be a very important 1.19. It says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. A lamb without blemish. A lamb without spot. Jesus didn't have any sin on him. Just as the ram was a substitute for the offer in the guilty offering, Jesus is our substitute. 1 Peter 2.24. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Let's go back to 1 Peter again. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 2.24. Now, that's a good verse right here. Take a look at this. It says, Who his own self bear our sins. In, in his own body on the tree. That he that we being dead to sin. Should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. Amen. By his stripes. Say with it. By his stripes you were healed. Oh thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord God Almighty. Mm, mm, I'm happy today. Woo. Woo. You know. You know I saw. I watch on TV. And there's a black man in the supermarket, okay? And he, and, 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 and the guy said to him, the, the, the man who's preparing the orders, everybody's waiting. The man said, uh, uh, number 34. And the black man says, whoo, cold cut. Oh, whoo, whoo, cold cut. Oh, way to go. Wow, I'm going to get my cold cut. Oh, oh, what a wonderful day. <laughs> Why don't you do that to um, the cross? Why don't you say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross of Calvary. Thank you for dying for my sins, for, for, for taking my trespasses. Now, you say, Rick, when, when, when is you introducing something new here? I never heard before. Oh, man, come on. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us. Trespass simply means we mess up people's life every single day. You know, we went to Peru. And for some reason, we pay a man down there money to go to Machu Picchu. I don't know, $5,000. I don't know what happened to that man, but the fear of God is all over him because he don't want to pay us back. A mud slop slide came in and destroyed the road to the Machu Picchu. Well, they got to give us money back. Now he's beginning to give our money back because the whole <laughs> bishop's office is on his <laughs> pay, pay, pay. <laughs> and he is about to pay again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, we have, uh, we have extended our time, and we're not through yet. But tomorrow we go back to it again. There's another 20 pages to go. Amen. So I'll see you tomorrow morning. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that through the cross of Calvary, all my trespasses, oh God, and all the restitution that I tried to do, God, uh, 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 showed my heart to you. I just thank you, Lord, that you forgive my sins, strengthen my life, and help me to live according to your will and call. In Jesus' name, amen. Eu oro estrela alva brilha em mim, brilha a luz que inunda o meu viver.